Things that were blocked by the courts. ABC Cecilia Vega is at the White House with more on that and what it does and does not include. Good morning, Cecilia. Robin, good morning to you. Critics like the ACLU are already promising to fight this new one in court. Even with all of these changes, they are still calling this a de facto Muslim ban, but the White House says it is confident this one will stand up to any legal challenges. That revised travel ban overnight met with protests outside the White House. No pain, no fear. Refugees are welcome here. But the announcement happened without fanfare. The president not even in the room. Three of his top cabinet members doing the talking. To our allies and partners around the world, please understand this order is part of our ongoing efforts to eliminate vulnerabilities that radical Islamist terrorists can and will exploit for destructive ends. And not taking questions. The White House instead releasing this photo of the president signing the new executive order in the Oval Office. The revision coming after a series of delays. But now the administration addressing many of the red flags raised by the courts and critics, including removing Iraq from the list of banned majority Muslim countries. Iraq is an important ally in the fight to defeat ISIS. Other changes? There is no longer an indefinite ban on refugees from Syria. Protections for religious minorities like Christians. The White House now rescinding the original order stalled in the courts. But counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, says that doesn't mean the first one was blundered. Is the fact that you're rescinding the first one an admission that it didn't go as well as it could have? What we're saying is we're not going to wait for the year-plus labyrinth process of the legal system to vindicate on the merits this particular executive order. Why wait when the country's safety is at hand is the calculation. Now, one other big difference with this new travel ban. The president said the first one had to be implemented immediately because the nation's security was at risk. But this new order doesn't take effect for 10 days. The White House says that is to give agencies the time to implement this, Robin. Of course, that comes after that botched rollout of the first one. Yes, it does. And, Cecilia, let's talk about Dr. Ben Carson and what he said when addressing HUD employees yesterday. He made this reference to slavery and immigration. There were other immigrants who came here, and the bottom of slave ships worked even longer, even harder for less. But they too had a dream that one day their sons, daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, great grandsons, great granddaughters might pursue prosperity and happiness in this land. Outrageous. There's such backlash to that, and Dr. Carson responded today. He did, Robin, and this, of course, comes in his new role as HUD secretary. This was his first time addressing the staff there, so he gets on Facebook, and this is what he said. Quote, the slave narrative and immigrant narrative are two entirely different experiences. The two experiences should never be intertwined. Trying to clarify, Robin, but maybe not doing experiences. As much as experiences. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, so thank you, man. Uh, it, it is. I, you know, when I heard about this yesterday, I was like, well, let me go on and see for myself because I don't want to be taken out of context. And when you see him addressing these employees for the first time, he made quite an impression. Yeah, the idea that slaves were brought here to pursue a dream. Oh, outrageous. Let's bring in Dan Abrams right now. I don't know if you want to comment. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to the travel ban right now. Let's get to the basics. Number one, the old travel ban, completely over now. Uh, that's right. It's effectively moot, and there's now a new one in place. And the people who hated the first travel ban are going to hate this one, too. But as a legal matter, they've addressed many of the concerns that were raised by courts. The fact that it's now clear it won't apply to green card holders. It won't apply to people with a valid visa. It doesn't seem to give preference to Christians. There's some reasoning offered for why they picked these six countries. That stuff really matters as a legal matter. And so I think that they've probably overcome well, most of the legal issues. Really, the, the White seems to think right now that this is bulletproof legally. I would bulletproof, but it's certainly a, a lot better. And I think that they have a very good chance of enforcing constitutional muster. But there will be challenges. Yeah, and, and the opponents still believe that the president's original call for a Muslim ban during the campaign caused this whole effort. Right. And, and there's going to be an interesting legal question about now with this new order. Uh, can they use the president's old statements uh, about what the intent of this was, or his surrogate's old statements against him in court when challenging this? Because they're still going to say this is a Muslim ban. Look, they could have added countries like North Korea. Let's 
which is not a majority Muslim. And, and, and then you really would have eliminated, I think, as a legal matter, uh, argument that this is just a Muslim ban. They didn't do that. And so now they are going to face this question again in court. Is this a Muslim ban? But I'll say, I, I said it previously when this first passed, the president has enormous autonomy on this issue, and I think they probably will pass constitutional Yeah, when it comes to immigration and national security, the president has a lot of latitude. Yeah, two separate questions, legal from policy. Okay, Gary, thanks very much. And George and Dan, there's also new fallout over President Trump's wiretapping accusations on Twitter. The one says Trump has likely not spoken with FBI Director James Comey, who asked the Justice Department to knock down Trump's claims. Our senior justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, is in Washington with more. And Pierre, has the FBI Director received any word yet from the Justice Department? Good morning, Robin. I was on the phone through the night with sources, and as in the Justice Department had not told Comey if it would honor his request to publicly refute President Trump's claim about wiretap his campaign. It's unclear this morning whether Comey is going to get what he wants. Here's to the, the dilemma. On the one hand, the Justice Department does not to comment about anything in regards to an investigation, but Comey believes that Trump's tweets give the impression the FBI did something improper. So with AG Sessions recused, is now career justice attorneys and an acting deputy attorney general appointed by Obama to sort this out. Comey's trying to follow the chain of command, and at least right now, he's going to be patient. One reason Justice Department taking his time, officials there realize public contradicting the president could poison the relationship with the White House, high stakes.